I just realized, like, since you guys can't see my hat in, like, 3D, like, if you were around me, you would see it, but you just see, like, this. I look like, <laughs> I look like a Byzantine mosaic or something where, like, I have, you know, one of the halos. That's just, like, a disc around my head. No? No other art historians? Okay, anyway. All right, guys, so I'm back again pretty soon after my last video, but I wanted to make another video, like I said, for um, OCD Awareness Week. Um, so... Yeah, I apologize in advance. I know the light is going to be doing crazy things and this video is kind of dark. I can see it on the thing. Um, just because this is the only time I have to film and it's super cloudy and like rainy and gross outside today. One of those like typical um, wet fall days. So one second it's going to be kind of sunny and then the next second it's going to be like pitch black raining. So whoops, sorry I can't control the weather guys. All right. So like I said, I wanted to make another video for OCD Awareness Week. And this video is going to be kind of what it's like living with OCD. Okay, um, I'm going to talk about some things that are specific to living with anxiety, OCD, since I kind of, in my last video, put a little bit of a base for us to all kind of hopefully understand a little bit more about what OCD is. So now with this video, I can kind of talk a little bit about what I go through, just day to day, um, living with this disorder. Um, understand that I can only speak from my experience. I know what other people go through. Um, but it's kind of like secondhand, you know, I don't, I can't tell you how they're feeling when they have issues with their OCD. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about my experience specifically. Just so that I wouldn't ramble too much, I wrote a little very short list of a couple things that I wanted to talk about, okay? Um, the first being, okay, before I actually start this, I'm going to say a lot of I can't do this or I don't do this or whatever. When I say can't, it means won't. Okay, that means like I physically probably can do these things, but I choose not to, I feel uncomfortable um, doing so, X, Y, Z, like I just don't want to do them. Okay, so when I say can't, it means I don't or I won't. The first one, um, I can't drive. I have had my license since I'm, you know, 17, um, which is when you get it in New Jersey. I don't, I know other states are a little bit sooner, but you get your permit at 16 and a half. I don't remember. That was a long time ago. That was almost 10 years ago. Um, but yeah, so I've had my license. I didn't fail my tests. I've never been into a serious accident. I've never, you know, been in any kind of whatever. Um, but I very, very strongly dislike driving and people make fun of me and they say, you know, I'm lazy or, you know, they're like, oh, you're still not driving, huh? I'm like, no, I am not. But at the same time, like, I'm 25 years old. Don't you think I want some kind of independence, you know? Um, do I like being driven around by my parents all the time and my younger brother? No. Do I like that my friends always have to pick me up? No. Um, but that's just how it is. All right, so the next one has to do kind of very specifically with my harm themes of OCD. I very, very strongly dislike touching knives, scissors, anything that's sharp, anything that I could potentially use as a weapon. And honestly, I don't even like to know where they are because if, if I know um, where something is, it's like on my mind, I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna go to that room and I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna do something terrible. Oh my god, I, I just don't even, I wish they would lock it up. I wish it wasn't in the house. And it, you can see how that gets a little bit like silly. And I know that it's silly. I know that. Don't try and tell me, you know, like whatever. I know, I know, it's silly. Um, but yeah, so that becomes an issue. Um, you can see how it's hard to do anything without scissors, knives, any kind of sharp objects. Um, so, but that's a common thing for many people, um, with OCD. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is the isolation, uh, aspect of my theme of OCD. I purposely isolate myself in the hopes that my fears of th like thoughts coming <laughs> that I'm going to hurt somebody else will diminish. So I try and keep myself away from my family. I try, I spend a lot of time on my own, riding my bike for, you know, a couple hours at a time, um, just laying in bed watching like YouTube and stuff. Um, just, you know, kind of being on my own in the hopes that I'm not gonna like have a thought that I'm gonna go like hurt my mom or like do something to my brother or like do whatever kinds of things. Um, doesn't always work. 
because I'm still um, very much aware of my surroundings and even if I hear someone talking outside the room or whatever, I'm very aware of their presence. Um, and I don't even have to know that someone's there um, to have a thought. I could be the only one home and I could be like, oh my God, when someone comes home, I'm gonna do this to them. Or I'm a danger because I, you know, thought this. So, I mean, it doesn't really help. I guess it's a compulsion in the sense that it makes me feel better immediately to know that I can just like go in my room and be alone. Um, but I really shouldn't be doing that. I should be around people as much as possible um, to try and like kind of get that fear to diminish. But, you know, what are you gonna do? We, we're all working on something, right? So the next one's a little bit funny. It's funny now. Um, it wasn't really funny when it was an issue. But the next one, I, for a long time, I like to knit or I used to like to knit um, until I realized that they could be a deadly weapon, the knitting needles. So for a long time, I could not sleep in a room where there were knitting needles. Um, I would have to move them to a different room. Um, and this goes for anything. I, for when I, especially when I first had my main onset of OCD, I couldn't go into the bathroom because there are scissors in there, there's razors in there, there's um, all kinds of things. But if you look at anything, you can use it as a weapon. And that kind of really scares me when I think about it. Because um, I try so hard to stay away from weapons, which of course I know I shouldn't be doing. Um, but yeah, knitting needles especially, though, that's like one thing that's in my mind um, that I couldn't be in a room where I had knitting needles and I would try as an exposure, I would try and knit and I would try and do whatever, but it, it was just so painful that I, I just couldn't do it. So I have all these like knitting projects that I started that are just not done. All right, so another one um, that I still struggle with, I struggled with even before the onset of my OCD, um, just as one of my obsessive kind of worry tendencies. Um, I can't comfortably burn candles. Um, this stems from the idea that I'm gonna forget to blow out a candle, I'm gonna leave the house, and uh, the candle is gonna somehow fall over or something's gonna catch on fire and the house is gonna burn down and all my pets are gonna die uh, and it's gonna be my fault. Okay, so I can't comfortably burn candles in my house. I still do, I do burn candles, um, but I usually ask someone else to make sure that they have been blown out. Um, and I've never had an issue where I left one burning. I mean, I've, it's never happened. There's never been any kind of thing that would spark this. It's just that, you know, I've heard stories and of course they warn you all the time never to leave candles unattended. And so I would, you know, burn candles and leave the house. And then the whole time that I was out, I'd be like, oh my God, I didn't blow out the candle. I, I definitely left it. And what if one of the cats knocked it over or their tail caught on fire and the whole house is burned down and everybody's dead and it's my fault. Um, so then I would be miserable. I'd be like, you know, anxiety. I'd like chew all my nails down to like the quick while I was out. I'd come home and I'd, I'd, I'd be like, okay, the house is still standing. And I'd go in my room and of course the candle was blown out, but not only blown out, but I'd put the top on it to keep the, like to smother the flame. Um, and so, I mean, there was no issue. I just couldn't remember. Like the thing is that you can't recall like do, oh, it's really light in here now. You can't recall like covering the candle. You can't recall, you know, locking the door. You can't recall, you know, it's like, it's, it's like you, you know that you did these things, probably, probably, because your anxiety wouldn't let you not do them, but you don't know that you, for sure if you did them. And kind of what I said with locking the door, um, that's my next thing. I can't be the last one out of the house. I can't leave the house alone um, because then I am, there's no one there to check if I've locked the door. I am someone that I do have checking compulsions. Um, that's one of the things that's, I mean, it's related to harm OCD and the fact that I worry that because I didn't lock the door, the door's gonna blow open and my dogs are gonna get out and get run over in the road. That's my specific fear. Um, with not locking the door, that the door is going to open and all my dogs are going to get out. 
Um, so in the past, I remember when I was in high school, so this is a couple years before my OCD set in. When I was in high school, I remember being the last one out of the house and I was like, wait, you know what? I don't know if I locked the door. I don't remember. This is the first like real incident that I remember being an issue. Like I was worried, I was anxious, I was really upset about it. So I called my friend, we were probably about 16, 17, cause she was driving already. Um, I called her and I said, are you home? Uh, because I need you to go to my house and make sure that I lock the door. And she was like, okay. And she did and she's like, yeah, you lock the door, it's fine. Is there anything else you need? Are you okay? And then I felt a little bit better. You know, I was like, okay, okay. But if I leave the house, I'll always text my brother and I'll say, can you check and make sure I lock the door? Or if I'm going somewhere with my family, I will make a point to be the first one outside so that I don't have to worry about locking the door. But if I do have to go and lock the door, I will pull on it many times, pull the knob, turn it, and like make sure it's closed all the way. My dad's like, you're going to break the doorknob. You know, you're going to break the lock if you keep doing that, don't do it. But it's just one of those things, man, I don't know. Okay, so the last thing that I want to talk about um, is something very specific to me and also very specific to people who have onset OCD like later on in life. Um, and that is the most, one of the most painful things is that I very clearly remember my life before my disorder. And I'm tearing up thinking about this because this is very hard for me. I very clearly remember not being sick. Um, and I, hold on. I very clearly remember some of the goals that I had for myself and the way that I felt about my family and my pets and my friends. And to compare that to how I feel now, is the most painful thing, I think, for me. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Damn it, why do I always cry in these videos? <laughs> All right guys, so I've composed myself a little bit. <laughs> so I don't really know where I left off with that. Um, it took me a minute there. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna kind of say whatever I was saying. I clearly remember my life before my, my disorder and my life now. And um, I remember the transition in between, um, but the way that I remember it, it's not, I mean, the, it's so weird because some of the memories are super vivid. Um, and I remember everything from like taste, smells, like noises, I remember all of that. But at the same time, it feels like a dream. It's very strange, probably because I was exhausted. I'd n not slept for, you know, days on end and I wasn't eating. So, um, you know, I had all these kinds of physical things that were happening as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was essentially my life, my, the first like 21, 22 years of my life. And then the two, three years since my onset and then the mental breakdown in between that landed me in the emergency room. I very clearly distinguish those, um, those two times in my life, but that's really hard. That's really hard to see how much my life has changed, how much my thoughts have changed, how before, you know, I never thought that I would ever consider, <sighs> I can't believe I'm gonna say this. I never thought that I would consider like ending my life, but I did. Um, I never thought that, you know, I would really, um, even though I've faced depression earlier in my life, uh, never in this way to the point that, you know, I didn't want to live. Um, and I don't know, like I, I'm mad about it. I'm like, I'm sad about it. I feel all these weird things. I'm never like, I, I just, I don't know. Um, I feel a little bit um, betrayed. I feel, I don't even know by who, like the doctor that, that screwed up. Like, I don't know who I'm betrayed by because it's not, I mean, it, it happened. 
It could have happened at any point in my life, really. Um, it just, it was triggered at a certain time. Um, but yeah, so that's that. I have literally rambled on for half an hour. Let's see how short I can cut this video down to. Anyway, um, yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm gonna try and have at least one more video come out I have uh, for OCD Awareness Week. I have one more kind of idea in mind that I wanna get to. Um, but yeah, so you guys have been awesome. Once again, I always try and say this. Thank you so much for reaching out. Um, thank you for, you know, um, finding something useful in my videos. Um, feel free, once again, you know, you can always email me. You can follow me and message me on Instagram, Facebook, whatever you need to do. Um, or you just, you know, can follow me on Instagram because you like my pictures. Or you can, you know, message me on Tumblr. Follow my Tumblr too. That's fun. Um, whatever you want to do is fine. I think my nose is running from when I was crying. That's awkward. Anyway, I'm going to get going. So I will see you guys in my next video.